Hey you guys, what's up? On Rested here, back with another JFAC. And uh, recently I've been uh, playing with my friend uh, Kaizen on kaizenworlds.net for uh, Minecraft. That's mc.kaizen-worlds.net if you want to join us. Totally free. Uh, and we were talking about, because Kaizen lives in Japan too, myths in Japan. Like a lot of the myths we get asked about while we live in Japan. Um, I heard this and this, is that true? I heard this and this, is that true? And I'd say two of the biggest myths that I hear that are like absolutely not true, I'd like to use this JFAC to dispel. Uh, and that first myth is number one, uh, all Japanese houses are like super clean and minimalist and very stylish and well kept. Um, for the most part, totally no. And, and I, you know, I totally understand where people are getting this idea from. Uh, they're getting it from a lot of these like interior decorating books in which case you know they've taken the best of the best from Japan and uh, when Japan does get to its very best level as far as style and interior decorating goes it, it's good it's it's real good you see it a lot in the stores here oh, beautiful interior decorating a real eye for space how to use it how to display it etc but in general the average Japanese person's home is how do I say this nicely? Kind of like a pack rat. Um, I don't want to say Japanese people are hoarders, but Japanese people tend to be pack rats. Um, they tend to save a lot of stuff. Uh, save like all different types of stuff, like free spoons that you would get from the store, plastic bags for, and, and you know, half of it's eco-friendly. I mean, they're trying to help the environment, which is awesome. But sometimes I see it at a lot of houses go into excess, like. It's cool if the store gives you a wooden spoon to eat your ice cream, but you don't need to keep like 1,000 wooden spoons. Um, it's cool if you want to use a nice glass bottle that you bought some wine in or a drink in, but you don't need to save 100 glass bottles in your house. I've seen houses literally where you can't walk through them very well because there's just stacks upon stacks of something that they like to save. I've seen houses where they have memorabilia from places they like, such as Disney, where it's like, yo, this Disney doll is like, falling apart, the stuffing's coming out, you know, Mickey Mouse's ears falling off, well, why are you guys keeping this? Yo, we went to Disney back in 1990, it was so fun, we don't want to lose that memory. Yo, take a picture and put it on your phone, dude. Um, that, that's the kind of stuff I'm talking about, you see like a lot of that. Now, I mean, that exists in America too. Um, it's just that I guess because, and this is I think what really makes the difference, is the fact that Japanese homes are far more small, far more cramped. There's not as much land to build on, so the houses that are built are oftentimes very narrow and built up on stories on top of stories rather than spread out wide, like an American house. So someone can be pretty messy in an American house and hide it better because it's wide open spaces. Whereas in Japan, if someone becomes a pack rat or is messy, you see it right away, like the second you walk in. Like if I could tell you, if I could show you, and maybe one day I'll get to, <laughs> the places that my relatives have, like my actual Japanese relatives that I have here, my mother-in-law, my sister-in-law, if I could show you their houses, you would just be like, what? And, and these are not like low-class people. These are people who are like doctors and work at hospitals and stuff like that. You know, they come from good families. They just save too much garbage. Um, right now, even I'm, I'm cleaning out an apartment that pretty much my family inherited. And I, I gotta take some shots of this. I'll take some pictures of it sometime and it just, filled with garbage that they saved over years and years and years. I mean, it's, you know, it's an extra apartment. They're, they've got enough money that they just have these apartments laying around that they're using for storage and they're still like just packed to the gills with garbage. Um, another big myth and something I really want to clear up right away, and, and I myself was a victim of this myth, I believed it 100%, is that Japan is technologically advanced and that Japanese people are amazing with technology. They have, you know, a great idea of how robotics were. A lot of people tinker around with robotics in their own houses, maybe even. You know, I mean, maybe maybe that's a bit of an exaggeration, but for the most part, you would think like, well, yeah, but they've got the latest, greatest in computers, right? Not really. Um, I think you'd be surprised to find that the average Japanese person has a very little knowledge of the most basic aspects of a computer. And I'm not talking to you like, you know, they can't open an Excel spreadsheet and make a really nice layout. I'm talking like my wife, for example, didn't know you could have, oh, I don't know, two different tabs open in <laughs> Explorer, Windows Explorer, which nobody even uses anymore. I mean, come on, Chrome, right? 
Um, this, I've seen this at almost any public school I've worked at in Japan, um, and even any kindergarten, nobody at the school, young or old, I'm not just saying this is the old people in Japan, young or old has any background in computers, um, to the point that like they don't know how to do basic, basic stuff, like uh, use a photo editing program uh, in the most basic ways, uh, you know, cut and paste movies, um, you know, and this this is stuff you're like, well, Scott, why would they need to do that? Well, you, you actually do need to do that to make like DVDs and picture albums for your school. Uh, usually they always hire out a second company. There's no such thing as like a yearbook club that makes the yearbook at the school. Almost always this is hired out. And if they do, if they do make their own, they literally sit there and cut it out piece by piece. A company sends them a template that they paste the photos to and they send that template in with the pictures that they've chosen and the company makes, I guess, scanned copies of it. So it's really low tech and, and there's a lot of that in Japan. Um, my own nephew, for example, 15 year old kid now, um, no idea how to use a computer. He didn't understand, for example, that if you get an iPod, an iPod, unless it has some sort of phone service connected to it, needs Wi-Fi to connect to the internet. And he didn't understand what wireless internet was. Like, he had no sense of it. They didn't even have internet in his house. Like, a lot of people don't have internet. Um, and if they do, they, they're like, wireless? Why the hell would I need wireless? And so I had to explain to him that not only did his house need wireless, I mean, not only did it need internet, but it needed wireless for his iPod to be able to pick up the internet. He's just totally clueless, because they just don't teach that kind of stuff in school. So those are like two real big myths I want to go ahead and close out. Number one, not all Japanese houses are mega clean, ultra minimalistic, open, beautiful spaces. At the same time, I'm not saying Japanese people are messy. Come on now. I'm just saying what you've seen in magazines is not every house. On top of that, technology, yeah, most people are still on their cell phones here. Um, you know, there's a lot of people who don't go smartphone and actually turn it back in to go back to their flip phone because there's a huge gray generation here. There's a huge old population. And, they find the smartphone too confusing. I had a boss at my last job who got a smartphone, returned it, and went back to his flip phone. Go figure, right? You would think. I don't know. Anyway, until next time, I'm unrested with the questions you requested. This is JFAC, Japan's Frequently Asked Questions. Have a good one.